are, we are recording now. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I've been getting involved with an organization that's in St. Louis Park. So it's in the Twin Cities. It is, um, but it's sort of a, uh, an offshoot of a national thing. It, it, what it is is XVR. So what, uh, I got turned on to it because I went to a VR art show that was put on by the Gamut Gallery. Oh, wow. And I love that gallery. I think they're the ones that are really doing young, interesting things. And I've always been interested in 3D worlds. And what they do is um, they are teaming up with something called Mozilla Hub and Spoke and all this stuff. And they can actually create 3D worlds very quickly, put them on the web, and people can go in. And it's almost like a Zoom, uh, but in, in three dimensions. So anything you can do in Zoom, like uh, share screens and stuff, you can also be an avatar and walk around inside. Do you need special goggles or whatever? No, no. Uh, but the good thing about it is that it is, it is geared toward using VR goggles. So if you're willing to uh, spend the $400 um, and, you know, and that's where things are going towards. So probably in four or five years, there'll be much more of that. Can I just um, get a clarification? Candy asked about the goggles and you said you don't need special goggles, but then you said it's geared toward the goggles. Well, yes, they're making sure that everything they do is accessible in a game environment too, so that you can put the, the VR heads up set on it and you can do all the same things. Primo? But, but do you does, need- Does this relate to the conversation about, the, about um, art include act? Well, that's, that's what I, um, they're, their premise is they want to make VR a social place in which uh, people can can gather and make art together. Ah, okay. And so uh, I, I think it's along yeah. the same line. So okay. you're talking about the possibility of them presenting at this thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. All right. And uh, there's an artist that is in it I Sheila, Sheila Asato. Yes. Yeah. She is phenomenal. I mean, I was really surprised. Uh, and she speaks so eloquently. So now, where did you see her? Where did you hear her? Me? No, I never, no, no. I never met her, but um, I, she was in the Zoom thing uh, that was put on by it's called REM5. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Have you heard of them? I've heard of them, but I've never seen anything. I've never uh, got involved with anything. Can, can I back up just a bit? Um, sure. For the benefit of those who are going to see this again, let's introduce ourselves um, and then kind of go through the agenda and pick up on, on suggestions for additional uh, invitees toward the end, would that be? Okay. Sure. I, I'm Margot Ashmore, and uh, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah, so, now, how do you like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, our names oh. our names come up at the at the bottom of the thing. Um, oh. So I don't know if you'll get away with that or not. But I'm Takuma Aiken. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> no. Well, that, um, you, are we really gonna, you want us to really introduce ourselves? I do, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, 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 I'm Takumba Aiken. I'm a, 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 a visual healer, a muralist, a art activist, um, a, a public artist, painter. 
All right. I'm just going to go around my screen. Candy, you're next. I'm Candy Keen. I'm um, I paint and dye and do wearable art and wall pieces, and I mess royally with the phone. So I'm an Instagram artist too. Um, my, I paint surreal worlds with apps. With what? Reality. Apps. I paint with reality. I mess with the apps to f and make surreal worlds and photo reality. Uh, your work would be so wonderful in these VR worlds. I know, about. I was just thinking both Tacumbas and I's work would be amazing in that. Yep. Yep, I'm working towards it. I'm going to be looking for animators, but keep introducing, keep introducing. Well, I, I might be the, uh, I might be the go-between for that. Okay. You're the ghost? Cool. Re Remo, you are next to introduce yourself. Uh, uh, my name is Remo, and I've been... I did art paper in, in the 80s, went to New York, did a lot of tech stuff, teaching artists how to write their first HTML, had the first visual arts website on the internet called Artnet Web. And, um, and I'm here helping out, helping out uh, the district do all these wonderful programs. Great. Denise. Hey, um, it's always interesting to take notes and talk. So I'm not going <laughs> to take notes while I speak, therefore being unrepresented in the notes. Um, I'm Denise Tennant. I'm a sculptor. I work primarily in clay. I um, create work in series uh, on commission and also create public art. And my role is um, I had the wonderful opportunity to present in two different chakachas through the district. And so my role here is um, more to, if there are questions about it, what it's like to do that. I found it to be a really valuable, really a lot of fun, a valuable experience in the 20 seconds, 20 images format really helps hone in on, on, you have to be really succinct and it's, I found it to be a wonderful clarifier personally and fun to present in that way. Great, thanks Denise. I'm Margo Washmore and my art is the Northeastern newspaper. I mostly sell ads, do a fair amount of editing and layout work. And I'm on the board of the Northeastern Atlas Arts District, which is the sponsor of the Pecha Kuchas. Um, okay, now we're gonna have to retrain my brain to Pecha Kacha. Yep, Cha Kacha. Think of it as Cha Kacha. I guess if there's commas instead of those E's. Yeah. Okay. Also, it means put that in Japanese. And I found, I mean, this is from a Japanese friend of mine. So that I think that helped. In, thinking, you know, cha cha sort of sounds like chit chat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so today um, we are going to, uh, well, we were going to talk through and, and give an opportunity for those participating to talk with each other about their, um, their platforms and their, you know, the, their body of work, but there being only one a potential presenter on the call, that's going to be a little hard, but... Uh, and Marco, what you said was that they weren't able to be on the call, but they're looking forward to seeing the call to get the information. So, to come up, I'm so glad that you're here on the call as, you know, one of the potential presenters. Representing the, <laughs> the art. The, yes, the, and I wish, I yeah. wish there were more, more people who, who were able to make it who were potential presenters. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, if... If the schedule will allow, we could set another meeting for when people are available. I just need to know, you know, when they're available and I can set up a Zoom call. Um, so the, the purpose of this, the way we framed it, is that artists are making news for helping express and heal recent and historical trauma. But the practice of bringing communities together through arts is time honored. Art include ACT, what we're calling this thing looks at the social practice of involving community members' voices through collaborative art making. 
visual and or performing arts, temporary or permanent. We are looking for artists and organizations to tell a variety of stories at this virtual event, not only for the Northeast Arts District, but of course, wherever the internet goes. The event will be posted and archived both on the Northeast Arts District website and on the International Pecha Kucha or Pecha Kucha um, <laughs> website. Very good. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I, I think we wanted to entertain specific questions that, that you have to come uh, about um, the either the topic or the um, the technical stuff involved in it, and then at the end, I'd kind of like to talk with the group about um, deadlines for getting various materials in so that we can properly promote the event and uh, you know give a few the most ex exposure that. Uh, that we can. Um, so um, I will be presenting uh, things that I've done or things that I want to do. I could, think that's a yes. Yeah, could be both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's how you work within community. It's about community and you together. Oh gosh, that's lovely. Yeah, it is. Wow. Oh my gosh. I might as well take advantage of every moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my encyclopedia for all my work. Oh. All my symbols are in here. I will be uh, creating a thing called uh, Tacumba Cons, taking all the symbols and breaking mm -hmm. them down singly so that people will know how to look at them and read them. Um, and I've been teaching rhythm patterns as a way for anybody that says they, they can't draw, including me to be able to loosen up and do something repetitive and then discover uh, from that to develop and grow. And then most, pretty, pretty often they forget about me and they start creating, you know, and I like to do things where I can do them on a, a square or no, I'm sorry, a four by, uh, a four by eight sheet, but then you cut it in half and you, you present half that, you want us to share another half you keep for yourself and then eventually well I used to have it where you could uh send it somewhere or when i did a thing at the walker we would hang up half of it and then you would have the other half at home so you would be showing at the walker and you would have your piece for a lifetime you know i did that with kids so i like to do things where people create their own visual voice but i like to find ways for everybody to know that they have a visual voice so um, basically, I um, just do exercises that I use on my, for myself to loosen up because I don't have a second that I can really give myself that I, I, I don't get a, what do they call it, the creative brain freeze or a, a artist block. Um, I have an artist universe, but it's not stopping me. It's, it's, it's actually <laughs> taking me around the block a couple of times. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm excited in finding other ways to reach the world, not just for me, but anything that I learn, I can share and take and share with others. Um, and then sometimes I can share them while I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, um, I try to be very um, approachable um, and accessible. Oh, no, don't say accessible. That's my other side saying, don't say accessible, because I, 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 I I create, I value my creative time a lot. And so when I say accessible, then everybody is calling and emailing and, and I'm like, no, 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 no. But then some of them, <laughs> anyway, you know, and, and, uh, and, and the ones that get through are the ones that are supposed to anyway. And, um, but I like doing things like this or, you know, like the, um, uh, the call that I'm going to be doing curating for uh, abstractions or the, uh, uh, for your organization. Um, uh, where I can, I can get to see and share and uh, make opinions even for like that for anybody that even applies. Uh, if you might not get the call, you'll still get a, if you want to talk to me, you can email me and we can talk about other things for next possibilities. Um, so, you know, I've just been fortunate and blessed to be able to do what I do and Finally, somebody knows I exist. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we had you at Franklin Bank, what, uh, almost 20 years ago now? <laughs> I don't 
know. Well, actually, two, I think. Really? I think I so. I did it still there. Yeah. Actually, somebody just brought back a painting because uh, <laughs> the other part of it was a, 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 a duo painting. And they let me get one part of it back that somebody wanted for a wedding gift. And they looked at the other part for what well, was done in 2000. And I think that was in the show there. So maybe 20 years, yeah. And so um, I just got that back yesterday. It's very strange how things are coming back. And I, I don't call it coming back. It's more like a Mobius strip. Mm -hmm. It go around and when it comes, comes around again, it has some additional things and maybe some things that are less, you know. Um, uh, so yeah, I've been, I've been doing a lot. I mean, I'm archiving right now and I'm absolutely going nuts. And, you know, I'm going to be bringing my assistant into it and then somebody to assist my assistant. But right now it's just like, I, I can look at a painting that I do now and even in the most abstract form, see something I did 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And it brings a smile to my face because it's like, wow, you know, I didn't lose it. You know, uh, people get scared of moving on, uh, going into the next thing, uh, taking the mistake and then making that the, the, the mastery new direction you want to go. And I, and I realized, uh, I realized early that you have to do that so you can have a, uh, um, an, uh, an encyclopedia, a vault of things that, um, that will, uh, it's like your treasure chest. It's like what you go in and you just let go and dig in. And, you know, I was uh, telling Candy that I, I painted on silks because the things that I saw flow, then I could go back to my paintings and do, or I'll do metal and I'll do clay and I'll do anything as long as I don't look like a an idiot, <laughs> especially if somebody's paying me to be professional, <laughs> that, you know, um, they all complement each other. So um, I, I uh, and I've, the few books I've read about artists, I remember Jacob Lawrence did a show at, I think it was the Whitney at 22. And they were on cardboard, they were painted on cardboard. So you know, materials and all of that, there's no real excuse for, I don't have the right materials because the right materials might be right next to you. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I'm just a creative force. I want to see. Denise, yeah. are you going to show me some ceramics? No. <laughs> no, I'm going to play with clay while I'm listening. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, you know, I, I, I can show you something that's really cool. Uh, but I, I don't want to be the only one. Am I the only one talking? No. Just go for it. We, oh, yeah. Show us something really okay. cool. Okay. okay. I'm just going to grab them there. Right here. I'll be right back. There's art around me, so you'll see something. And I'm right back here. Right here. I've been doing paintings that I use tape to tape the things that I, I want to keep. And then um, I, and, and I cover the painting probably about 80% uh, with uh, this tape. And then I created these things. And I think I showed some of them on Instagram. Yes, but, yeah, you did. And so, but this is. Ooh, I like that one. That's new. Or... Yeah. yeah. Wow. Ooh. Where's the... Ooh. You got to learn where the lens is, where the camera is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're doing fine. These, these are way more interesting the ones you showed that on tv those are really lovely yeah i had a limited um amount of uh Ooh. Time. but because you know and, and now it's not just the painted tape but then i create another uh, couple of layers of um like the way the paint is is when i when i'm doing a painted tape piece i'll tape it and block out the things that I don't want, but then I paint it uh, a solid color with the tape on it so I get kinds of textures and things like that. Oh, okay. So like this one, you can tell kind of clearly. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But, but I, I, I now have 149 of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's very different from the others. Yeah. Yeah, because it's um, it's just based on the painting and what I do. And oh, like this one, uh, I had the tape on already, and then I painted something gold. And when I put it on there, I just took the back of my brush and did a sort of circular kind of uh, swing to it. Yeah. Yeah, I like doing that with the gops on, on mono printing. That works really well. Yeah, well, this is this is very much like printing actually because of the layers, you know, right. mm -hmm. uh, or silk screening, you know. But seeing that I was a horrible silk screener, I was a master <laughs> photographer. But for some reason, I just didn't get all the cleaning and you know screens and the. I just didn't get it. I just didn't do it well. Yeah. I'm real impatient. I have to do things fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I treat people impatiently, but I treat myself like very, you know, so. I think, I think, T, that there's different processes that each of us sort of resonate with. Uh-huh. You no, know, so sounds like whatever it was with the, I mean, the, when you say impatience, I mean, clear to me when I look at your work, there's so much detail. I would, I would never think of patients being not a factor. Like you're doing each of the the images swiftly, but when you add them all together, they've got to take a sizable portion of time. Well, you know? they do. But maybe I should say it this way: the paintings are impatient. Ah. Huh. And they're pushing me, pushing me, and so I try to get them done. As I call, I mean, it's, it's a woke, waking me up at times. Like this one's really cool. So it sounds that like is, very it pretty. is that the speed of the printing process is not, not, uh, not conducive to the well, the, the steps that you have to do capturing the ideas you want to capture. Which is really strange because the lithography, when I was grinding stones, when I you know did the carbon random and grinding them, and then uh, uh, the all of the different Mm -hmm. Steps that I would do for some reason, those were like painting, they were like steps that I could see a creative thing starting to happen. The the, the level of fine stone, uh, a gray stone compared to an Italian, you know, um, sort of a tan stone, uh, just all kinds of things that you know. Um, but as I got older, I think I got quicker. And things that I would see in printing or in clay and all of that, I would go back to painting, and then I just make a few moves with my hand and the brush, and then it was already there. So I'm like, okay, you know, I don't need to labor over this. Let's it's there, right? You know, it help me get there. So, you know, but I, you know, and 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 then and in public art, um, or when no, like better yet, in residencies when I was working in schools we would have a theme and I would have them talk about it. I teach them rhythm patterns. Then we go to oil pastels and paper or canvas. I would like to do it so that they could feel the canvas. And um, there was one time when I was doing them, there was so many kids that I just created a, a, a one inch wide by 50 inch long scroll and rolled it out on the table and kids would have to do it where they were sitting. And then we would move the scroll and they would have to add to the other person's rhythm. Ah, nice. And I, like and I said, be sure you do your best because somebody's gonna have their yours in their hand in a second. You know? You and they, was, and you they could look over and say, I want a little bit more red over there. And I'm like, hey, 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 that's called advising and consultation. <laughs> Don't touch that person's hand. Do you have any you know? Do you have any photographic records of that? I'm I'm pretty sure I have or I can find. Is that you know, would be things. that would be just a such a that real, was, really that was a snapshot of of this you know this art include act. Uh, that's yeah, a it, really you know, distillation of of you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then that was in Lakeville, so I think I I'm not sure if I'm still in touch with that art teacher, but. It was uh, it was pretty intense because you go in, and you go. 
okay, where, what, what are the hours and all of that? And you find out the hours aren't enough for all the kids. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. I just did a presentation to all the kids. All the kids have to work on this. You know, I do have a video of a, a, a fifth, fifth grade kid, group of kids in Lakeville that did a mural called Music is the World. And they did three canvases. But before that, I had them drawing what instruments they thought, you know, uh, when they think music of the world. And I had, you know, from a, uh, electric guitars with flames coming off of them to these beautiful, intricate Chinese instruments that this young lady just did so perfectly. And then somebody would do the world and have the piano keys going all the way around it. And then I just had to find a way to connect them to, to just kind of like, I told them I was just connecting dots, but they were just big ones, you know. Right. And they would say, no, I don't want that there. I'll put it there. I mean, I had uh, um, uh, dyslexic and all kinds of physically challenged kids. One day we had to, uh, oh, that was another school where I put everything on the floor because the kid was in a wheelchair, but he said, I can work on the floor. I said, everybody, we're on the floor. Oh, nice. like, well, I, don't, I don't think we can. I'm like, uh, I have tarps in the car. I'll be right back. I brought the tarps and we pushed the tables back and you know when I would go in the tables would already be back and so that's a bril that's a brilliant include right there I mean wow you know it's like um I, I just told him if I do this you're my assistant and he he remembered all the rules and he would get it ready for me when I got there and I think I have a newspaper uh I have a newspaper with him and I posing mm. you know? and then and that was like man I it was like 25, 30 years ago. And I, I remember him calling me, Mr. Kumba, this is Greg. And I'm like, <laughs> Greg, is your, is your, has your wheelchair grown up too? He says, you know who this is? I'm like, of course I do. <laughs> you know, this is smart Alec. You know? It's funny. I've been talking to you and I've been looking at my pieces and not even showing you guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's um, you know, I just, I just encourage anybody that has doodles. Oh, 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 I have to show you, um, uh, do I have them? I just bought five pieces from a young man named Miles. Um, trying to think of his father's name, but forget my pieces. You want to see something really great? <laughs> <laughs> So Candy, I was thinking maybe you could talk a bit about what you know about Kira and about uh, the other party that Al Gross was it? Um, yeah, that, that was Here, Al Gross and yeah. Oyata Hatate. I don't know how to say his name. I just know how to spell it. And he is the, the Oyate of Hatatanen. Um, his Person, helper person, Laura, got back to me. And um, they're storytellers and um, they're in the indigenous community. And um, Leslie asked me to go find them. And because they did an amazing um, spark um, one summer for um, Northern Spark. And I looked online and it was really beautiful how they got all these young people and not so young people. Um, doing storytelling and poetry and hip hop and dance and um, in their work. And um, so, yeah, and they answered me back, which was incredible. So, yeah. Um, so that I, potential. I really appreciated them. Yeah. And I just went online and I found the Northern Spark um, it was last year. And I go, oh, it's too bad I wasn't feeling good that day. <laughs> it was really cool what they were doing. Tacumba did a, a Northern Spark, what, a oh, 2013? Or I, I think so. It was a 30 foot canvas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I had um, uh, another artist, Aaron Marks, who's kind of like I consider him like one of my sons, but you know, I can only have so many of my kids say, you know. But um, Aaron, I told him I was going to come out there, but I had done a, another presentation at a theater and I had to just leave there and then go. <laughs> go to this and then be up all night, you know? And I brought literally furniture and I had two glass French doors and 
a table and he brought music and and we just had a long table and we just rolled it out and uh the lights would be off it's like it was it was like uh painting it with oil pastels in the dark mm -hmm. and even though when your eyes adjust to it you know what you're doing and i didn't know what was going to happen and we had to kind of almost try to create a, a makeshift schedule or something tell people come back and i'll save your three spaces and you know i was always uh uh if i see girls that would come up and all of a sudden like see guys i said guys you got to come back later this is ladies time you know <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of things because you know they want to do they just want to talk to the girls or i say if you want to talk to them uh you need to draw them. we're draw drawing um uh uh what light can you bring to the night and something like that you know and first i cut off the first piece because i was you know going to fit it in the table then i'm like i have no time for that and it doesn't make any sense and we would take it and we would after a while we could uh, stretch it out we say turn on the lights and everybody screen turn on the lights and then we stretch it all the way across the street you know it was interesting you know uh, as much as i could remember because i was very sleep deprived but these are miles's uh pieces Ooh, nice I tell you, the minute I get a dollar, I'm always spending on another artist's work. That's the way it is. Where'd you find him? Well, he lives in Lower Town. He's he's grow he grew up here, and mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm <laughs> I don't know why I have a blank on his dad's name. Uh, he's his dad is an artist and a magician, and it's. Oh, wow. Well, I guess that was 67 will do to you. <laughs> so. It's in there. Yeah, yeah. You, you take a big deep breath and let it out and it shows up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it'll, 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 it'll come today. It's almost there, but oh, yeah. he's really, he's really, he was walking, he's always smiling, you know, usually he used to ro roll around on a skateboard. He'd be moving so fast. And I'm going, young Miles. And he'd go, hey, you coming? <laughs> and his voice would disappear. And, and he would tell me about his art. And um, yeah, he doesn't know. And in two weeks, I'm going to buy him a, a very hefty set of paint pens. Mm, nice. And whatever else he wants, because he's using some other kind of marker. So I don't want to dictate what he uses. but. Um, seeing that I, I have a couple of commissions that I'm doing that I'll have some extra bucks and I had told him that I was going to get him something a while ago and look at that stuff. That's really beautiful. I, yeah. I find it really interesting. Um, how old is Miles like in his mid 20s? Uh, Miles is um, 17 or 18. No, he's out. Of, well, he's still in high school. Okay, so I'm 17 or 18. When I went to um, university, you could go really cheap being old, and and I really found it interesting the um, different ways of seeing from people of the different age groups that we were. It was just amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, I, it's funny. I look at this, and I remember in the 70s, a uh, secretary the name of Almeida Cox for the African American Cultural Center. She would have those um, of uh, uh, felt tip markers, uh, big, mm -hmm. like big pins, but one was green, one was black, one was red. And she just doodle with them and do these. And she would work for the African American Cultural Center. Mm -hmm. And she would do these things with those all day while she's on the phone. And she ran that place <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. And then she just throw them in the garbage. Yeah. So I would, I would always get them out of the garbage. She says, what are you doing? I'm like asking you for permission to get the drawings out of the garbage. <laughs> and she said, why? And I'm like, I don't know, because a very one thing that she was always about is, you know, she's extraordinarily beautiful. You, you didn't know if to compliment her or say something nice, she'd cheat her head off, you know? So I'm like, they're very nice. What? Very nice drawings. Very nice drawings. And she said, oh, why didn't you say so? And then she'd let me have them. <laughs> so somewhere I found three of them about four years ago and put them away because they were very influential in the way that I worked after that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people have to realize that, you know, the little thing that when they say this whole thing, that old thing has can be a great thing for somebody that causes them to think a different way feel a different way and so 
basically I kind of take that mantra on my thing. This whole thing, you know, so far I do a, a hundred of them or mm -hmm. thousands probably, you know, and um, yeah, I, I would really like to uh, work with some storytellers and I, I do know some and some spoken word people and um, I was planning on singing on my next Instagram while I'm working, just go ahead and sing. This guy, met, I met him, he was from, I think it was from New Mexico. I'm not exactly sure now, but I met him over at the Black Dog. I had finally gone back over there and sat on the patio and lo and behold, I meet somebody and him and his lady came by, he gave me some CDs and he actually, oh, he actually paints on the CDs. You want to see those? Yeah. <laughs> I have everything at this table. <laughs> well, he's getting that. Um, do you think that we've got, you know, he, he mentioned different ages. Do, do we have different ages represented in, in the selection so far? Um, no, we're all kind of older. Um, I tried some of the, no one's answered me back. Um, so, so the, um, the XVR. I'll just I'll just ask different. the universe that sometimes works, although this COVID, I'm not out as much. Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask the universe to bring me somebody. Mm -hmm. That actually works for me. It's really wonderful and wild. Yeah. I mean, the, the XVR thing that, that, that Remo was talking about earlier, um, if that is mostly young people, that, that would be a great... That'd be perfect. Entry point yeah. for asking them to participate. Yeah. 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 yeah, I, yeah. I think they're... They're not real young, but they're in between. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there's, some, there's some people, there's a group called oh, uh, Project that, Rojo. Mm -hmm. and, Project uh, Rojo? Project Rojo, and it's a, it's a, a, a um, fairly large group of African Americans, but it's all artists that can be members. Um, but there's a lot of African American uh, artists there, a lot of female, African-American female artists there. Christopher Aaron Deans is a, uh, um, the, him and his wife, Para, are the chairman of it right now, uh, coordinators of it. And they might have some artists that, uh, so if you send that to me, I think I sent them something though. I think I sent them all of whatever you sent me, Candy. <laughs> oh, cool. So, so yeah, this is just another artist. He, these are, these are, he makes his own CD cover uh, from paper bags. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. And him and his brother um, uh, do the music and do the covers. They're all different. So now I have to find a CD player. <laughs> My computer used to have one, but now I have a laptop and it doesn't have one. So I'll have to find something to play on. Yeah, I'll check around the house. The kids had several, but I don't know how together they still are. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I'm going to put a, a post it in my uh, in the Lower Town Law. Somebody has one, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. if they take their plant off of it or their turtle, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, so what else do we need to do here? What well, what should we talk a bit about the 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 technical part of of um, yeah. You know, getting getting the images into yeah. the PK um, format. <laughs> yeah, I I have been playing with that, and um, I listened to their video three times, and they said that you could use PowerPoint. So I had made for school a PowerPoint that was supposed to be in Google Docs, and so it didn't work for school, um, but. Um, so I, I made it for the 20 slides and I couldn't fit it into their thing, but my husband showed me how on PowerPoint you go to file, you go to export, you go to JPEGs. And so I got it all in. See, I'll show you guys. So, okay, there we go. There we go. Yes, now it works. Okay. Oh, yes, clearly. see, that's the, that's the thing. And, um, so I'll see it says drop and drag. It was really easy. And um, then I'll go, then I, since I've had a lot of uh, save next, and then um, I did the um, audio and I recorded per slide. And since um, 
I've had enough. I tried a lot of costuming for improvisational comedy, so I can do improv, so I did that. And then, um, uh, so I did that um, previous next. Um, I already did this, an uh, audio. Um, and I did, oh, so it must be in my. Um, so is this, to, is this yeah, their app? This yeah, this is what? it. Yes. This is my presentations and. Okay. Um, and this is, uh, no, it's publics. I haven't. I haven't published it yet. Um, assets, download files, edit audio, art with whatever. Um, this I haven't published it yet. Um, so, uh, so, so do we want Remo? Do we want this to be published, or are we going to publish all of them at the same time? Or, you know, how do we how do we figure out what the order of presentation is? Stuff like that. Well. If they're published, then the person who is running the uh, is running the Zoom show would just uh, take over the screen sharing and and start 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 the presentation. Okay. I think it's that easy. So, no. so yeah, because it, it said that if you have an account, you could have it published at a certain date. But if you're doing it privately, um, it'll as soon as you do it, it's published. Mine's, con mine's considered in progress. So um, uh, keep, uh, so yeah, I, I haven't published it yet. So I did um, find that you can publish it and then you can make it private after you publish it. Only if, you can only make it private after you publish it if, if it's through the, uh, if you have a paid account, not if you have a, a, a non-paid account. I don't have a paid account. I think. Oh, I oh, well then, well then, well then, hey, then that's cool. There's, there's some benefits that you have a paid account. I think we have a paid account through Leslie. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we have a license through Leslie. I, yeah, I don't we do not have a paid account. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is some of the information that was sent to me that I can click on and see this um uh, this app or this uh yeah and, can get on and 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 then build my build my 20 images and my presentation yeah and takuma it was really easy even i could do it <laughs> then it must be really easy <laughs> yeah and and if you if you want if you want words on it you have to make that before you put it in the you have to make your slides with the words on it Already. Yeah, I can do that with I can I can do that with um, Keynote. Oh, I have Keynote. Uh, oh, I Keynote, yeah. A, Keynote. I haven't yeah. used it in a long time, so um, yeah, I'll do it. And I have tech people here that can help me put it together too. So I'm not yeah, it's, so about that. It, it actually once I got the um, slides, it figured out how to do the PowerPoint slides into JPEGs. I was off and running. I just learned how to do PowerPoint in school last yeah. fall. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So when is this due? When are you, when are, when are we gonna do we good. I need to have this good question. Yeah. Um I only got a couple of minutes left here, so me okay. too. Yeah. Um so I started writing out that um we're we're gonna need visuals for a flyer that would be sent out for this. We will get the word out on the district website and in the district e-newsletter August 30th. And so, you know, even probably before you have your presentations ready, we could use some, you know, basic biographical promotional material. Um, as, as for the deadline for uploading to create, uh, what do you think, Remo, would be um, a good, you know, good deadline, like two or well, three days before the event? Well, when do we have the event date? The, the event oh. date is September 13th. Oh, that's good. Uh, then you need you need all of the uh, all of the presentations done a week beforehand, so that we can practice. I mean, we have to have some sense of, you know, how to run this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's why I was going to ask my friend who's run those great big church things. Oh, my husband Craig said if you want to have 
larger than, I guess, 100 people. Um, he looked it up on um, and contacted uh, Zoom, and, and they said that you give them a $50 a month um, per subscription, but if you can only go one month if you want. Mm -hmm. So it's an extra $50 to have 500 people on your Zoom line. Yeah. My, my guess is that we'll be okay with 100, and if we happen to be turning people away, so be it, you know. Um, it's, it's the first time we're doing it virtual, and, and uh, better, to, better to have the room feel a little more packed rather than, where are all the people? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to, yeah, since I haven't been able to get the Textile Center to talk to me, they're short staffed. I'll have my friend Pat Grady um, help me understand how to do Zoom for um, that many people. Because mm -hmm. they're now doing it fairly regularly, and she's um, in charge of it. Yeah. I'm willing to be, but I would rather have, be able to accommodate more people and pay the 50 bucks. I mean, I'd, I'd, you know, uh, give a gift of the 50 bucks. To, but if everybody feels really strongly that they want to cap it at 100, I, I'm, I'm not insisting. But I, I've just noticed with some other organizations I'm part of that when it went to Zoom, it's not it's 100, you know, we weren't talking numbers like 100. We were usually talking really little numbers. And there's all sorts of people who were there yeah. in other places. And I would rather have the room rather than turn people away. I yeah, I, I agree with that. I did a thing with um, Robin Robinson on the uh, the mural or the protest art. We had 410 people. Oh, and wow. People sort of just put on, got on it and put money into it so that, and I mean, I can do the same thing. I, I can do 25 of that 50 if you, you know, it's just, it's, it's easier to just go ahead and do that. And, and because people get curious to hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. And he, you know, you're, you're right, Margo, the first time we might only have uh, 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 40 or 50, but you never know because they'll, they'll, they'll call somebody, you know, uh, like Denise called me and the next thing you know, there's somebody else wanting to get on, want to get on, want to get on. So, okay. So. All right. <laughs> and, and Candy's <laughs> running the show, right? You are. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to learn how to run the show. I have um, a couple mentors. So. Yeah. The thing is, in terms of that money piece that we have to do through Leslie, because she's got the, the license. So um, that's not a problem, but just functionally speaking, don't we have to do it through Leslie? Or are we going through well, somebody well, My husband mm -hmm. has a license too, a pro license. So, no, no. Um, oh, yeah, wait. We, oh, I'm mixing, I'm, mixing, sorry, I'm mixing up Zoom and PK. Sorry. Okay. Great. Great. Erase that. We're, we're, and, just using, we're just using the PK format to produce the the individual programs and then we'll be using zoom to bring all the people in to see those programs and to have an interactive discussion after the after the program um whatever you say <laughs> <laughs> i'll try to keep up <laughs> uh, i'm gonna have to go because my 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 phone is dying and i can't find my charger here uh, and I, I gotta have to be somewhere in 15 minutes in the building so yeah so well, I thank think, you so much. Yeah. Oh no, thank you, thank you. Hey, Denise, my girl. Yeah, you get me. And like, where are you? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you didn't say where are you, but you know, I'm like, wait a minute. I have so many things going on. It kind of just like I get thrown off at times. So. Yeah. You know. so I think um, you know we'll we'll have a little more discussion about um, about schedule and what we would like for people to. Um, to give us in terms of, of publicity and then also every artist we hope will help build the audience you know what we were just talking about is you know invite everybody that you can think of and yeah. especially since they don't have to show up to a physical location um this could be really cool for for cross-pollination right. yes and, yes. and then, you know, one of the things we can talk about is that, um, you know, when we do these things in a physical place, I've sort of um, moderated, you know, introduced the arts district and so on. And, you know, we might want to have other moderators of questions or the fact that the chat is often used to um, 
you know, to batch questions and, and let people have side conversations and things like that, you know, I think we'll need more than one person to kind of watch um, and yeah, you know, yeah. feed those questions um, out, so. No, that makes total sense from what my friend told me of what they did for their church. Yeah, yeah. They had about two or three people kind of moderate mm -hmm. back and forth. And were they all in the same room so they could pass each other notes or did they just sort of take turns jumping in? Well, they had, they had to break out into several chat rooms kind of, True. and one worked and one didn't. And so um, I don't remember the full story, but I think she's done it a couple more times and I'll be seeing her Wednesday at our wearable arts meeting. So mm -hmm. I'll find out more. I think it's somewhat a matter of having the participants enable the ability to go into chat rooms. So, you know, anybody who has participated in Zoom will probably know where to go, uh, but we may have to instruct them to do that in order to get broken out. But that's a great way to, to um, or at least we should think about that. You know, because if you do have 400 people on the call, <laughs> easily someone can. So Kind of dominate, but yeah. So sure. each artist could have their own room. Uh huh. Yeah. The the way That's I've experienced nice the idea. Room thing is that the host creates a document with links, and, or you know, this is the one way. I, and and then you know, with the option in it, and then what somehow behind the scenes, whoever knows what they're doing with Zoom has created it such that you you're in Zoom, but you. You click on it and then you somehow get transported to this other room and then ask for sure, do you want to be there? And then you say yes. But you can always go back to this this program document. Like if you want to go to a different room, you just go back to the program document and click on a different room. You know, so if you want to zip around to different rooms, at least the way that I've participated, and I have no idea how they set that up, but I do know the people, so I could ask them in all my okay. that's probably and, not and, and, and this good. is I'll text, not chat. This is text, not voice. No, this is this is Zoom voice. It's, it's Zoom. Zoom and Zoom breaks out into chat rooms and to different rooms. It's voice. Uh, it it is yeah, it's just like what we're doing now. But you get moved to a different room and you see and talk just like we're doing. I see. Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. should not take on trying to figure that out, but I could connect somebody up with people who know how to do that if they don't. No, yeah, think, well, yeah, I'll oof. ask my friend and you could connect me up to your friend and I'll, that's, that's what I'm trying to do is lean in and learn all this technology. Right. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. your, your um, adventurous spirit in this, Candy. It's, <laughs> I love the way you're just sort of like flying into it. It's beautiful. I am. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I can see that I'm going to be dropping off here. So everybody take care. Keep me, keep me abreast of what's going on. <laughs> Well, Denise, I'll talk to you either later on today or tomorrow. Okay. We, okay. And uh, Remo, next time introduce yourself with your beautiful last name, man. Why are you crazy? I know. Yeah. Margo, it's good to see you again. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. Bye. Been since, Bye. Uh, since Northern Spark. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Oh.